the previous lecture, we had seen how the translation from a virtual address to physical address was taking place, right. Uh, essentially, the once the page size is fixed, you find that the page offset bits would be the same whether it is a virtual address or the physical address. However, the virtual page okay, that is going to be indicated by the remaining of the bits and then in the example we had chosen fine, uh, we had a 20 bit virtual address and a 16 bit physical address. So, the 8 bits that are there okay, in the virtual uh, address which actually corresponds to virtual page number defines a set of 256 virtual pages. right? Corresponding to that, you have in the physical memory, you have only 4 bits, which means there are only 16 pages. So, 16 of the virtual pages will be available in the physical memory, that is what it is. Then we said that, uh, what is it we had assumed? We had assumed a page size of 4 kilobytes, right? Page size of 4 kilobytes. Now, uh, assume that there is a program of size 8 KB, fine. That means half of the program is already available in the physical memory. So, if that is so, you can see that this virtual address to physical address translation need not always be done because once you know which page it is, because there are essentially two pages that will be required, right? Correct? Then you would see that uh, given a particular page. Right, the translation that is from uh, this 8 bit to 4 bit need be done just once and you can possibly carry on unless you go to another page, right, carry on with the same particular address. And that is why this uh, <coughs> uh, virtual address to physical address translation which involves referring to the page table and where is this page table that is in the memory. So, any uh, access to data consists of the two components as we saw in the previous lecture that is first referring to the page table which is in the memory and then getting at the physical page information and then actually constructing the physical address and then making use of the physical address to arrive at the data, right. So, to speed up this process because frequent uh, reference to page table is not necessary, right, you introduce in between, right, a cache like structure, which is in fact we said a buffer specifically in this case it is a translation leukocyte buffer with uh, uh, say not as many as 256 uh, entries in that particular buffer, but less entries may be 16 or 32. In our example we had assumed a 32 okay, size buffer. Now, this buffer is also going to give the same information which the page table gives. Right Now, being a cache, this is not going to contain all the entries right, that are there, that is 256 virtual pages are there. In the buffer, we are not going to have all the 256, we are going to have the most recently used in our case 32 pages, because we assumed a size of 32. Okay. Now, where is this 32 coming from really, how, how do you really do it? Now, there are 8 bits, right. So, there are 8 bits, for 32 you need 5 bits. So, there are remaining 3 bits. So, these 3 bits really indicate 8 different blocks of this 32, which con, uh, constitute the total 256. To understand what is going on, remember that this is something like a cache. And so, let us take a uh, uh, look at the cache arrangement, okay. we, this is something which we had seen earlier. Take a look at the chart okay, of uh, <coughs> something which you have seen earlier. Now, here you see a cache. Now, here it is uh, you can take it as the translation looker side buffer and here you have the main memory. Okay. Now, here actually this corresponds to the page table entries, right. That is what it is. Instead of cache and main memory, just understand that this is TLB and this is the page table. Now, you can see here in this particular arrangement, any one of these 4 can be in this particular location, right. 
So, obviously, there must be an indication which of these four. Okay. Given that, if we know that what it is, we, that is called a tag bit, right. So, in this particular arrangement, you need in fact two tag bits which will indicate which of these four, because one of 2 to the power 2, that is what it indicates, right. So, similarly, we have in this particular translation, okay, three bits here, will, which will indicate which of one of those eight groups and then the remaining five correspond to the 32 things, okay, 32 entries, most recently used entries. Now, uh, you might ask, uh, after all, finally, what we want is this particular physical page number, it is already available here and you are going to make it available something like duplicate, in duplicate here also, that is what it is, right. What exactly we gain in this whole process? Now, remember that this page table is in the memory, right, whereas TLB is like a cache. Whatever advantage we get out of cache, the same thing we have to get here. For instance, TLB, the access time may be 20 nanoseconds, whereas the uh, main memory access time may be 100 nanoseconds. Okay? Now, if we assume you have uh, say 4 KB size, for that is 4000 dot times. Now, instead of uh, accessing this 4000 times, every time taking say 100 nanoseconds, if you can access this every time taking only 20 nanoseconds, there is savings, right. That is precisely what we gain from this. Good. So, that is the purpose played by the uh, uh, buffer in this case, uh, it is something like a cache, right. Good. Uh, what is it? Uh, <coughs> uh, we also saw in the previous lecture that the CPU places the address, virtual address that is what it is and then from the virtual address, the physical address will have to be got. So, first it will look into the translation look aside buffer, for the corresponding page if the information is there it will take it, then we call it as a TLB hit. If TLB miss is there, then what is it? We have to look into the page table to see whether that particular page is available or not. Okay. Page may be present, page may not be present, we do not know. If TLB hit, then page is present, that is what it means. Now, remember, uh, we have to remember this point again and again. All these are okay for read cycle, for write cycle, okay, be very careful. Whenever something is written in the address location, should mean to see that the data integrity is maintained, that the data is faithfully available to all uh, parts of the computing system. The same thing, the same data must be available in anything. For instance, we have a copy here, right. Suppose some change is made here and not there, then this is not truly reflecting. Okay. So, whenever a write is there, we have got to see that wherever it is relevant, it must be written. Anyway, we will talk about it later if necessary. Good. So, uh, so TLB hit means it is available in the page, TLB miss, we do not know, we have got to look into the page and see whether the page is present in the physical memory. If not present, then it is a page fault, we said, right. If it is present, proceed, that is the page uh, uh, number is available and with that construct a physical address and make use of the physical address to look into the next point what? Cache. Then again there may be a cache hit or a cache miss, okay, like that this is what we were seeing. Good. Now, uh, in case there is a TLB hit, then all that we say is in so reading from here, the physical page number can be read from here and then concatenated with the page offset. Okay, this will be the physical page number, this will be the page offset, the same thing whether it is virtual or uh, 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 which one, uh, physical address, right. It is only this will change, this is a 4 bit uh, physical page number and an 8 bit virtual page number, that is only change, good. Uh, once you have the address again, one has to look into the cache. 
right. So, even if in the case of TLB heat, all that it says is the physical address can be immediately computed, then again it must be looked into the cache. Good. Now, in case there is a page fault, what, what do we mean by that? That is the corresponding page that is required is not available in the physical memory. Similar to cache miss, we have the fault, right? Page fault. Now, in the example we have taken, um, <coughs> there can be as many as 256 virtual pages, but only 16 pages can be accommodated in the memory. Fine. Now, a page fault occurs when one of the pages which do not belong to the 16 that is being that is to be accessed because the virtual address indicates a page which is not present. Remember, we have a present bit in the page table. So, that if it is 0, that means that particular virtual page is not available in the physical. Now, suppose uh, uh, the physical memory has been fully fi uh, filled in with 16 pages. Now, the problem arises which one of these 16 pages can be removed and the newly required page brought in. This particular thing we say which of the page can be swapped out, okay. how can we uh, which page we can swap out and which page we can swap in. Remember I had used these terms earlier also. Okay. So, this one basically what is it we are doing? We are by swapping out and swap uh, some uh, page and swapping in another page, we are replacing. Okay. So, this is also called a page replacement, right. We are replacing a page which is possibly not required anymore, it is only possible, we do not know. Okay. Then replace that with a new page which is swapped in. So, there must be some algorithm based on what, right. There are essentially two types of algorithms. One is called an L or U algorithm, that is what we are talking about is a page replacement algorithm. Sometimes it is also called a page replacement policy, okay. The page replacement policy is based on some algorithm. What is LRU? LRU is least recently used. Okay, least recently used algorithm LRU. It is not that the algorithm is least recently used, it is just that the page had been least recently used. Okay. Uh, why do we have to bring in an algorithm? Why do you have to bother about an algorithm? In the case of cache, specifically, we are, let us take a look at the chart. In the case of the cache, uh, we have, of course, we have seen only one specific type, direct mapped cache. What about the uh, cache here also, like page in the other case, in the case of cache, we have block. Okay? The very cache arrangement talks about, uh, is based on an algorithm. What is it? In the direct mapped, this particular cache location 1 can have a uh, one of these main memory location, location number 1, R11, R21, R31. There is no question of, suppose uh, block 1 is available in cache location 1 right now uh, at a given instant and then 11 is the next block. There is no other uh, choice here, 1 will have to be replaced by 11. Okay? Even though one would have been used just in the previous occasion, one will have to be moved out and 11 has to come. This is fixed, right. Now, this is fixed, whereas in the case of uh, uh, page, pages, what did we say? We said any virtual page can be in any physical page, right. We will talk about it a little more later again. So, since uh, that is not a case in the case of the cache certainly not the direct map arrangement. There it is fixed, 
either 1 or 11 or 21 or 31 can only go into cache location 1. That is not the case here in the case of page. Virtual page number 1 can go into physical page number 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, that is what we were talking about, right? Okay. Uh, so, that is why you need a page replacement algorithm. Now, we say the uh, specific algorithm LRU means the lease uh, the, that is swap out the page which has been least recently used, meaning keep all those most recently used pages intact and whatever had come, uh, whatever had been, whatever page that had been used least. Now, there are two different things. It is uh, uh, the important word is used. Why? Because the next algorithm will tell, tell you why we, we must pay attention to this particular word used. The other one is called the FIFO algorithm means it is first in, first out. Okay? First in, first out. Now, this particular thing does not talk about the usage of the page. This algorithm says whichever page that had brought uh, that had been brought in or swapped in first, swap it out whenever it is required. It is possible that this particular page would have been very recently used, but still this will because it had been swapped in first this it will have to be swapped out, whereas here that is not the case here. In the other one, suppose we had brought in 16 pages and page 1 let us say is the oldest page. Now, as per FIFO algorithm that will be swapped out, irrespective of whether in the previous occasion page 1 was used or not. Whereas, in this particular one, if page 1 had been used just before even though it might have been swapped in first would continue to be there, because that is the least recently used. Okay. So, essentially you have these two algorithms. Good, I think uh, we may not very much, maybe while working out some example, we will see how this uh, thing works. And I am not specifically bothered about uh, telling you how to implement this, it is very easy, is it not? That is basically with each page we have to associate a number. With each page we have to associate a number, and the moment it is swapped in, you keep incrementing the number or resetting to zero. Just work out how it is. Okay, so uh, <coughs> this extra attribute attribute fields associated with the page will uh, give us uh, some idea of keeping track of whether it is a recently used page or the page which has been swapped in earliest and so on and so forth. Okay? Like protection bits, some extra bits are required. Using that, the mechanism of implementing this or this algorithm is possible. Good. Uh, so, the best way would be, well, uh, let us just try to recall. Why are we doing all this? We are doing all these things so that the user may be given an impression that very large program he can write, right? Even though physically that resource is not available. So, all this translation is going on. The user is not really concerned with it. I have said many times, <laughs> I will say that again. Okay. Now, a page fault occurs not because of the fault of the programmer, right? It is because we have restricted space. This is the system problem. Now, if a fault occurs, what does it mean? The CPU will have to wait until the required page is swapped in, is it not? And uh, uh, there will be extra software which takes care of that is management which manages all these things. So, it is all these things going to take time, right. Suppose there is a program which frequently leads to page fault, then 
the pages will be swapped in, swapped out and the CPU utilization will come down, is it not? So, that will have to be avoided. Anyway, there is a name, the programs which cause frequent page fault, okay? the programs causing frequent page fault, they are said to be thrashing. Hmm? That's if that is the terminology that is used, causing frequent page faults. Okay. That thing, there is a term for it called thrashing. So, programs should not be thrashing, meaning once loaded, all the required pages must be available. Fine. In other words, misses and false will add penalty and it will bring down the oh, processor utilization. Good. I think we have said enough. Now, uh, let us try to, oh, that is, uh, we have said enough of uh, virtual memory. We had uh, somewhere left uh, discussion on cache and come down to this, is it not? Because we said that uh, whatever we discuss here is meaningful in the other context also. So, that is what we will develop next. We had started with a cache arrangement, right. So, we will go back to cache and also make use of some of the uh, concepts we have developed here and then try to study both of them together. The very first cache arrangement we have talked about was a direct mapped, right in which we recently saw, so, uh, we can take a look at uh, the chart again, right. The cache consists of what? Blocks, is it not? It consists of blocks. Now, given a specific memory address, shall we take a look at the chart? Given a specific memory address, it maps onto specifically one cache, that is the direct mapped arrangement, right. 21 means it will go only into what? the tag will be 2, 11 means the tag will be 1, it will also map on to location, cache location 1, 25 means right? the tag uh, field will have 2 and the memory data from 25 will map into cache location 5, 25 means 5. Okay? So, <coughs> in other words, given a specific memory address, it will uniquely map to one specific location, that is the direct map arrangement. Hmm? Have we seen something else, not uh, in cache, but in virtual memory discussion, we had seen something else, we will come to that. So, this one we will say is a unique mapping, is it not? Given a specific memory location, gets uniquely mapped to one. This is at one end we may say. Now, at the other end we had seen, what is it? In the case of uh, discussion on virtual memory, what did we come across? We were talking about a virtual page going into any one of physical pages, meaning given a specific uh, page address, it will go into this or this or this or any of this, is it not? This is the arrangement we had in the mapping between virtual page and physical page, correct? So, we are talking about 256 virtual pages and only 16 physical pages indicated by 4 bits here, indicated by that is a physical page number and 8 bits for virtual page number. So, any of the virtual uh, rather a given a virtual page, it will map into any of the 16 physical pages and that is why we needed also a table, because we need to keep track of as I said, where uh, is what, right which virtual page is exactly in which mem uh, physical page, we needed that information. That is why we needed a page table also. Whereas, this kind of a special arrangement we, we did not need in the cache, because it is fixed, remember? Good. 
So, this arrangement where you have a unique mapping we said direct mapped right. We can also have a cache in which given an address it can go into any uh, any block right given a specific uh, sorry given a specific memory address that can uh, memory uh, we say block address it will go into any of the cache blocks. Of course, we would need a table like the page table there. Anyway, this arrangement is the other extreme. Okay, this is unique we here any right. So, this one is in fact called a fully associative arrangement. So, these are in fact two extreme ends that is at one end we have direct map and at the other end we have fully associative it can go anywhere. Do we have anything in between via media? Yes, we do. What is that? That one is called uh, because this is fully associative you can say that it is something like a partial association it's not called partial associative I am just saying okay. that one is called set associative. What is the meaning of that? That is uh, here we are talking about blocks number 0, 1, 2 and so on right okay. and so on the number of blocks what happens is the some of the blocks will be formed into set for instance this one will be called a set 0 say block number 2 and 3 will be formed into set 1 okay and so on so forth that's why it's called a set associative now what i have indicated above is only a specific instance or example because there is no harm if you combine three blocks and form a set right. So, this is an instance in which I have combined two blocks and then formed a set. So, this is specifically called a two way set associative arrangement cache arrangement ok. So, since two is a specific thing the more general one will be n you can combine any of the n blocks hmm? n may be ah you can see here when n is 1 it is direct mapped when n is n <laughs> the whole thing then it is fully associative right. So, n can be 2 or 3 or 4 now we are just taking one particular uh, uh, this thing instant that is n is 2. Now, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is given a memory address here there is uniquely it must be looked only into that location right. Uh, shall we take a look at the chart and then see suppose instead of this arrangement that is 21 must map only into 1. Suppose I say 21 may be in 1 or 0 that is what I mean by set ok. 0 and 1 I will form a set then 21 could be in I mean either in 1 or 0 as far as the cache is concerned. The same thing is true of 20 also 20 also can be in either 0 or 1 ok. So, I form a set like this 0 and 1 as a set then if 20 comes I will look for either here or there that is within the set that is what is what is meant. Similarly, 21 that is the memory address then it will be looked for either here or here. So, within that particular set that is what that set associative thing is ok. So, this way the uh, cache content availability can be improved ok it all depends upon the uh, sequence in which these things come right the the memory addresses come ok. So, let us uh, uh, try to see this through specific example ok. We will take a specific specifically a problem of three caches right one uh, uh, direct map arrangement and one specifically let us take a two way set associative arrangement and then one with uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, a full, fully associative arrangement. Okay. Uh, we have to make certain uh, assumptions, right? To make it uh, make the problem quite simple, we will make assumptions like uh, yes, uh, the block is of four. Okay, here it is uh, too many. It's very general, right? I will just uh, reduce it to four, and then uh, work out specific problem to see how depending uh, actually we would be seeing how depending on the cache size and then whether this or this or this arrangement right the miss penalty can be reduced that is our idea right the miss penalty or fall penalty must be reduced we will just see with a specific example. So, for the problem let us assume a cache of four a cache of size four blocks four one word blocks let us say okay that is uh, <coughs> there are just four cache locations uh, we will assume some specific sequence in which the memory address comes now uh, let us recall how the cache address is calculated you take the memory block address that is the memory address that comes and then you do a modulo arithmetic that is mod and then the number will be the number of blocks. Okay. How many blocks we have here? We have 4. So, the cache address will be calculated as the memory address and then mod. Okay, mod. Now, here 4 because we have 4 blocks. Right? We have 4 blocks. So, let us assume a sequence of memory block addresses that is as generated by the CPU and then take a look at the cache address. Suppose we have 0, then 8, then 0, then 6, then 8 and so on. This, this is the sequence in which the uh, addresses are generated by the CPU. Now, the corresponding cache block address where will it be okay now before we compute we'll just uh, take a look at it the normal sense so, so the memory address will be something like this zero memory address will go here one here two here three here okay memory address 4 will map into cache 4 that what i am doing is memory address huh? that's the memory block address 5 will be here 6 will be here 7 8 9, 10 and so on, right. We will just see that is memory address 0 must be here, memory address 4 here, memory address 8 here, we will compute the same thing. Now, memory 0, 0 mod 4, so 0 divided by 4 and the remainder is also 0, okay. So, that is what it is, 8 mod 4 which is 8 divided by 4 is 2 and the remainder is 0. So, this is what you find, right? 8 maps on to 4, that is what it is. So, 0 again, same 0. Then, 6 for mem memory address 6, 6 mod 4, 6 divided by 4, you have 1 and the remainder 2. Check 6 maps on to cache address 2, right? then 8 we already calculated 6. Now, see here this is the sequence in which the addresses are generated. In other words <coughs> uh, that is to start with the cache will contain all valid bit 0. Valid 1 means it has relevant data right it will all be 0. So, first time when 0 comes right it will look for so, this will be a case of a miss, right. Nevertheless, after first it will be a miss because it the cache will not originally contain anything. So, it will have to be a miss, right. Now, the uh, we are only going to talk about the data part, okay. So, the data coming from memory location 0, that is 0, okay, if you want put it that way, 0 will go into this cache location. So, I will just mark it as 
from memory address 0, the data part will be in this particular location, okay, after the miss. First, of course, there is a miss, okay, um, fine. So, there is a miss here. Then, for 8, hmm? where is the 8? 8 is also has to be mapped here, okay. Now, you can see that the valid bit will be 1, but the data contained will be that of location 0. Again, it is a miss. So, what happens? The, content, the data contents from location 8 will be entered into this, okay, into cache location 0. Now, the previous data brought from location 0 is gone, because it is direct mapped, right. Okay. So, again it is a question of miss. Now, next 0 is placed, 0, same. Earlier we had now this cache location 0 has not contents from memory location 0, but of 8. So, again it is a question of miss, okay. again it is a miss. Then 0, uh, sorry 6, the next address is 6, 6 maps on to cache location 2. Okay. So, it is again a miss, because for the first time this particular this thing is access. Afterwards, after it, the miss data from location 6 will be entered, that is what it means. Again, it is a question of miss. Now, the next memory address is 8. What do you find? 8 maps on to cache location 0, let us see here, and does not contain. So, again, it is a question of miss. Right, and after the miss, contents from 8 will be available. So, in this sequence, at the end of this particular sequence, cache location 0 will contain data from memory location 8, and cache location 2 will contain data from memory location 6. That is what this indicates. So, it is a question of 5 misses, right. So, well, right. So, this leads to 5 misses. Am I right? Yeah, all of them are misses. So, let us just uh, work out the second arrangement, that is the set associative. Oh, we have to be more specific. It is a two way set associative, that is, we are combining two blocks and form a set two way set associative arrangement. Uh, yeah, we will assume again four blocks. Huh? Now, as far as the cache is concerned, this is block 0, block 1, block 2, block 3 as before, no change, but here these two form set 0 and these two location form set 1. Now, how do you compute the cache address? More specifically, when you talk about cache address, maybe what we mean is the set address, okay. Pay attention to that point. It is a set address. Uh, Okay, mm. instead of explaining, I will just tell you. In this particular one, this is computed like take the memory address and then earlier we were doing mod the number of blocks because they were uniquely available, number of blocks, they are independent. Here we do not have number of blocks because we are not going to distinguish between these two. Okay? given a particular thing, we say it may be either here or here, as long as it is within the set. So, we have to put it as mem mod number of sets, okay, number of sets and number of sets what we have here is 2, okay. 
So, specifically it is memory address mod 2 that is what we have. <coughs> okay. So, for the same memory sequence let us work out okay, not equal to this is the memory sequence okay. same 0 8 0 6 8 0 8 0 6 8 and so on. Now, the cache part of it that is in our case actually it means the set. Now, apply this memory uh, memory address mod 2. What is mod 2? You can see 0 mod 2 will be 0, 8 mod 2 will be 0 because everything is divisible by 2 and the remainder is always 0. So, you can see that all these are going into cache address that is set 0, but set 0 consists of two locations actually. So, we will just work out how it is. Memory 0, yeah, first thing, right? This will be miss. So, it will be a case of a miss. Shall I mark it here? Yeah, it is a case of a miss. So, after the miss, arbitrarily we will say within the set it takes the first location. Within the set, it will have to be loaded. So, you know, by there must be some algorithm no? within the set you out okay so you just put it there then 8 ha huh. 8 also maps to set address 0 right it means here and now you find this is free so 8 can go into this nevertheless it's a question of a miss because to start with <coughs> data from memory location 8 is not available, it is a question of miss. Anyway, to start with it is so. Now, next this is 0, ha, huh. 0 is available, correct? In the set 0, it is available. So, this is a question of a hit, right? 6, ha, huh. it has to go into 6, uh, sorry, me, uh, memory address 6 corresponds to cache address 0. Now, which of these? Now, an algorithm must come in, right. So, suppose we have say least recently used, right, then it is 0 which is been re least recently used, right. So, 6 will come and replace uh, not 0, but 8 because 0 had been used, but if it were first in first out, 6 will replace this. So, it depends on the algorithm. So, we will I will assume least recently used. So, since 0 has been used, this will be replaced. Okay. Again, it is a question of a miss because 6 is not available and it is being replaced. Now, remember I have assumed the use of LRU algorithm in the replacement. So, it is very much like a page replacement, we have also the cache replacement and this comes out mainly because of the set problem. Okay. Next, 8 is 0, oh boy. So, since this has been replaced, fine, this again it is a question of a miss. Uh, yeah, 8 is not available. Now, since this has recently come in, we have used it. So, this will be 8 will go into this, it will replace this particular one, correct. It is also a question of a miss. So, now here we have in this as per this arrangement we have 4 misses, right. Good. Now, one thing that is uh, to be noticed about set associative arrangement is um, there will be a tag for both the locations. Right. So, instead of talking about a tag, a valid bit, tag bit and the data field, okay, valid field, tag field and data field for each location, we generally talk about for the whole set, which means in this particular case, there will be something like this, uh, 2 okay, for a set 
given a particular set, there will be one tag, one data and another tag and another data. So, that is tag 1 and then data 1, tag 2, data 2. Okay. So, the moment an address is ma uh, computed, immediately that set both the tags will be checked. Okay. And of course, the valid bits also are there, I have not uh, specifically indicated here. So, both the, uh, I am saying both mainly because it contains two locations. If you have n locations, all the n. So, they can be checked, let us say in parallel and then choose whichever is free and then if there is contention, then resolve it by some algorithm. Okay. That will have to be done in the set associative case. Good. Now, let us uh, uh, see the third category, namely the fully associative one. Okay. The third category that is fully associative. Now, fully associative, there is no really any computation of address and so on so forth. We will see why. Cash, because any Oh, any memory block address can go into any cache block, that is what it means, right. Now, let us just take memory, the same sequence 0, 8, 0, 6, 8, 0, 8, 0, 6, 8. Fine, directly we can work out. This is the sequence we have assumed so far. So, <coughs> let us see about that. <coughs> Fine, fully associative, anything can go anywhere. Agreed? Fine. So, first it is a miss. So, let us assume 0 goes here. Okay? It is a miss. 8 can go anywhere, no? We will assume that is. Oh. Yeah, that is the right way, that is what we have been following. So, 8 goes into the next one. It is also a miss because initially it is not so, it is not there. 0, it is a hit, it is available here. 6, right, it is a miss and let us place it here. And 8, it is a hit because it is available here. Agreed? So, now you can see that there are three misses. Okay. Now, you can see depending on the different arrangements, we have different number of misses. Also, it is uh, dependent on other things. Suppose we change the block size, say from 4 to 6. Now, let us just say for the same two way set associative, you change from block 4 instead of block 4, you go for block 6. Just see for yourself what happens. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 6 of them are there. So, if you do set associative, right, then <coughs> for the same 0, that is memory address 0, 8, 0, 6, 8. Now, the we have to have what mod 3 because we have set, we have 3 sets here, set 0, 1 and 2, 3 sets. So, if you do the cache address correspondingly will be mm, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0. <coughs> Will it be mod 3? Will it be okay, 0 mod uh, 3, right? <coughs> 0 mod 3, okay. Oh, here it will be 2, right? Now, see what is happening. So, this will go into 
0. So, it will be here let us say okay. then <coughs> 8 it goes into uh, 2 there is set 2. Okay. Anyway, it is a question of a miss to start with it is a miss 2 again it is a miss. So, that is what it is 0 yeah it is available. So, it is a hit and uh, 6 it is a miss, but it can be accommodated say here okay. and then 8 is already available. right? So, now you have 3 misses in, uh, in this right because there are 2 hits agreed 3 misses. Now, compare this with what we had earlier. We had 4 misses and now we have 3 misses. So, basically what the lesson we uh, learn from this is that this particular performance depends on the cache size. So, depending on the cache size. So, one thing is different arrangements. Second thing is the cache size. The same thing you can work out for instance instead of say having uh, this. You go for an 8 block we have 6 blocks here, you go for cache of 8 block size or uh, yeah we have 6 here, so go for 8 and work it out. So, depending on the cache size, the misses will vary, in other words the performance will vary. So, the performance depends on the cache size also. Then another point is, why talk about only one cache, you can have multi caches. <laughs> multi level caches, cache 1, cache 2, cache 3 and so on so forth. Is it not? And the similar concept we introduced the translation look aside buffer also the same way right. All these things are in use. Anyway, the end result is the miss penalty must be reduced that is the main thing.